Hey, 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 awesome people. Mr. C back with another Fractions video. Make sure if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. This video is going to be about subtracting fractions with unlike denominators by replacing given fractions with equivalent fractions in such a way as to produce an equivalent difference of fractions with like denominators. Whew, a lot of words there, this is what we're doing. We are going to be subtracting fractions with unlike denominators using a standard strategy. This will be the teaching video where we are going to break this down. In the description below, you will find our practice problems video for when you are ready for that challenge. You'll also find all things we've done for second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade fractions. Check that out. Parents, teachers, a big link, two links for you for iXL. iXL is an incredible program I use in my classroom. Two links, one is for a seven day free trial, the other is for a 20% off an annual or monthly membership. This is a great way for students to get independent practice, for them to track their learning and to see where they've come, okay? To track that growth. 20, 25 minutes a day is a great, great way for them to use it, okay? Again, this is our teaching video for subtracting fractions with unlike denominators using a standard strategy. Let's do it. Well, awesome people, we've got our problem on the screen, but before we even get started, make sure you have a growth mindset. Growth mindset means that we are looking to challenge ourselves. We're gonna use our mistakes to help us get better. We're not gonna give up. We're gonna keep practicing, okay? So we are subtracting fractions that have unlike denominators. And what you're probably, probably, probably noticing here is we've got two thirds minus one half, and the denominators are completely different. So if you've been following us in our fraction series, we have already added fractions with unlike denominators. And using that learning that we've already had, that prior learning, we're basically going to do the same exact thing here because the only thing that's different between adding and the subtracting of fractions with unlike denominators is this right here, what operation you're doing. The only difference is we're subtracting instead of adding. So everything we're gonna do is gonna be super, super similar, okay? So that's really good news if you've been following along. If you're new, don't you worry. We're gonna show you how to subtract, and once you know how to subtract, you're gonna be able to add, okay? So let's do it. So we need to list out these denominators. And the reason we need to list them out is because we need to find common denominators. To find common denominators, we're going to list out some multiples of both of these numbers. Why are we doing that? Because we're looking for a common denominator. Right now, our denominators aren't the same. Eventually, you'll get to the point to where you can just look at this and probably solve it, but we're not there yet. So let's make sure we have good strategies to get us there. So let's list out some multiples by skip counting by three. 3, 6, 9, 12, okay? Again, I only go like four or five multiples deep. Why, students always ask me, Mr. C, do you need to go more? Yeah, you may have to go further, but I don't like to do a bunch of extra work. If I can only list out four of them and find a common denominator, then I'm just gonna list out four, okay? That's just kind of where I start at. Some teachers may tell you to list out five or six, I just start out with four, okay? Same thing, listing out multiples of two, so skip count by two. Two, four, six, eight. All right, now that we've done that, what are we looking for? Like we've listed out multiples of three, we've listed out multiples of two, what are we looking for? Well, what we're looking for is a common denominator. What we're looking for is a common multiple, the least common multiple. And what I mean by that is we're looking for the smallest number they have in common. So let me show you how we can do that. Take a look at three here. Do you see the number three in these multiples? No, 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 no. So both of these numbers do not have the multiple of three in common. Let's look at six. Do they both have the multiple of six in common? two, four, six, whoop, hold on, look, I've got six and I've got six. They have a common multiple of six. So what that is telling us is that our fractions 
are now going to have denominators of 6. Now, how did I get that? By listing out the multiples and finding a common multiple, a common number they have, the smallest common number, the LCM is what you'll hear it called. 6 was the smallest number they had in common. Now, what do we do now that we have that information, Mr. C? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create some equivalent fractions. We're going to take this fraction and create an equivalent fraction here, and we're going to take this fraction and create an equivalent fraction here. Let me show you how we're going to do it. How did, I want you to think about this, this 3 in our denominator is going to become 6. And how is that going to happen? Is it going to be magic? Are we going to close our eyes and when we open them it's a magically number 6? No. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply the denominator, the 3, by what? 3 times what will give you 6? Now some of you may already be saying the answer and that's great. Some of you may be a little stuck. Well ladies and gentlemen, there is a cheat sheet available for you right here. You already have the answer. Count how many multiples it took to get to 6. 1, 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. Alright? Now listen to this. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. What does that mean, Mr. C? Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. So if we multiply the bottom by 2, what do we need to multiply the top by? What do we need to multiply the numerator by? By 2. Multiply the denominator by 2. Multiply the numerator by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. All right, 2 thirds is equal to 4 6. We created equivalent fractions here by multiplying the denominator and numerator by the same number. In this case, that number was two. We're gonna do the same exact thing over here for one half, okay? How does two become a denominator of six? What do we multiply two by? Some of you are probably already thinking it. Cheat sheet is down here. Count how many multiples it took to get to six. One, two, three. 2 times 3 equals 6. So if we multiply the denominator by 3, what should we do to the numerator? Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, and vice versa. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Whatever you do to the numerator, you do to the denominator. So if we multiply the denominator by 3, right? What do we multiply the numerator by? We multiply the numerator by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this information below here. Okay, give me a second here, let me fix that. So I'm going to rewrite this information below here. 4 6 minus 3 6. And the reason I'm doing this is because it just makes it easier for me to see because there's a lot of stuff going on up here. So I like to rewrite it to make it easier to see. Denominators, are they the same? Yes. Denominators are six. Subtract the numerators. Four minus three equals one. And our answer is one six. So let's think through this again. We started off with two thirds minus one half. The denominators weren't the same. So because they weren't the same, we needed to find a common denominator. How did we do that? We listed out the multi excuse me, we listed the denominators and then we wrote down multiples of each denominator. 3, 6, 9, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8. And we were looking for the smallest number they had in common. And in the case here, the smallest number they had in common was 6. So we took these 6s and that was going to be our new denominators. And we took 2 thirds and we multiplied 2 thirds by 2 to get us 4 6. We multiplied 1 half by 3 to get 3 6. 
and we got an answer of 1 6. Again, this here and this here became equivalent fractions right below it. You have to create equivalent fractions that have the same denominators. The denominators are the same, then you're able to easily subtract and get your answer of 1 6. So, don't just lay your head down if you made a mistake. Don't just lay your head down if you're stuck. Where are you stuck at? Where are you lost? What doesn't make sense? That is where we start at. That's where we get you caught up. Parents, teachers, don't let them put their heads down. Have them show you where they get stuck at. Did they get stuck over here? Listing out multiples. Did they get stuck here? Slow yourselves down, people. All right, we have plenty of time to learn this. The more we practice, the better we're gonna get. So stick with me. Rewatch this one if you need to, and then do another one with me. Okay, let's go. Brand new problem on the screen. We've got 3 fourths minus 1 6. So here we go. Let's take a look. Denominators are different. Okay, so if the denominators aren't the same, it's going to take a little bit of extra work here because we want to find common denominators, create equivalent fractions, and then solve. So let's do it. First thing we need to do is list out, write down the two denominators. Denominator is 4 and 6. Now we're going to write down some multiples of each. So skip count by 4. 4, 8, 12, 16. List out some multiples of 6. 6, 12, 18, 24. And again, you can keep going if you need to. I like to stop at 4 and see if I can get a common denominator, a common one. Okay, So we're looking for the smallest number they have in common. Let's start with 4. Is there any 4s down here? 6, 12, 18, 24. Nope. So they don't have 4 in common. What about 8? 6, 12, 18, 24. Nope. They don't have 8 in common. What about 12? 6, 12, 12, 12. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. There is our common multiple. So that means that our equivalent fractions that we are creating for 3 fourths is going to have a denominator of 12. And our equivalent fraction for 1 sixth is also going to have a denominator of 12. Okay. So now's where it gets fun. Let's do some multiplying. This denominator of 4 is going to become 12. How? Well, we're going to multiply 4 by what? 4 times what gives you 12? If you don't know, use your cheat sheet right over here. Count the number of multiples it took to get you to 12. 1, 2, 3. 4 times 3 gives you 12. Are we done though? Are we done right here? Is there anything else I need to do? What am I putting here? Am I putting a 3 in the numerator? No, I am not. Because whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do the same thing to the numerator. So if I multiply the denominator by 3, I'm going to multiply the numerator by 3. So 3 times 3 gives me 9. So we've got an equivalent fraction for 3 fourths as 9 twelfths. Same thing over here for 1 6. Let's do it. Denominator of 6 becomes a denominator of 12 by multiplying by what? Use the cheat sheet. Count the number of multiples. 1, 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Multiply the denominator by 2. Do the same thing to the numerator. 1 times 2 is 2. And again, I'm going to rewrite things underneath here just that way it's easy for us to see what we have. We've got 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths. Are the denominators the same? 12 and 12. That's good. So our answer is going to have a denominator of 12. Subtract the numerators. 9 minus 2. And we get an answer of 7 twelfths. So walk you through it one more time. 3 fourths and 1 six. Denominators weren't the same. We listed out the denominators, created some multiples, 4, 8, 12, 16, 6, 12, 18, 24. We found the number they had in common, the smallest number, which was 12. 
So we knew that our equivalent fractions for 3 fourths was going to have a denominator of 12, and our equivalent fraction for 1 6 was going to have a denominator of 12. Then we had to do some multiplication. We multiplied the denominator by 3 to get 12. So if we multiply the denominator by 3, we do the same thing to the top. 3 times 3 was 9. And then we did the same thing over here, but by multiplying it by a different number. And eventually, we got 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, and when we subtracted, we got a final answer of 7 twelfths. A lot of moving parts there, but the nice thing is, once you master how to subtract, you can add. Once you know how to add, you can subtract. They are very similar. They're the same exact strategies, okay? Ask yourself where are you stuck, what isn't making sense, where are you confused. Parents, teachers, have them show you where they're getting stuck. Students, your job is to find that spot where you're getting stuck at. Don't just put your head down. Stick with it. Keep practicing, pushing yourself. And when you're ready, click on that practice problems video in the description below. All right. Make sure if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. That's all I have for you. Mr. C, out.